I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So you're chosen by God, but you still struggle with sin. Believe it or not, that's something that happens quite often to God's chosen. Because at the end of the day, we're still fighting against the flesh. In fact, some of the most prominent people that God has used in the Bible, they were chosen, but they still struggled with some sort of sin. Something that was hard for them to overcome. But in most cases, God chose us when we're broken. And the more we put our faith, the more we put our trust in God, that's when the healing process begins to take place. The more you fall in love with God, the more you're going to get to a place in your life that you want to let go of the thing that you struggle with. And God is going to help you do that. But some of the most profound people that God has used in the Bible too struggle with sin. Abraham struggled with lying. He told the king that was named Amalek or something like that, right? That Sarah was his sister, not his wife. His son did the same thing. Isaac, when he got Rebekah, he told the king that that was his sister, not his wife. Noah had an alcohol problem. David struggled with lust. And his son also struggled with lust. Solomon, Moses, struggled with wrath, with anger. Sometimes he can be disobedient because he felt like he couldn't do certain stuff that the Heavenly Father was telling him to do. And the more you complain about a particular situation, God considered that tempting him. And Samson, struggle with alcohol and women. He had a drinking problem and he lust after strange women. These are all people that God has chosen to do mighty things for the kingdom of God. But at the same time, they still struggle with sin. So you probably asking yourself, how can God use someone that has these type of problems? The answer is this, because in most cases, people look over the ones that they deem to be unusable. See, God chose you and he already knew what you struggled with. And believe it or not, Lord Jesus struggled with temptation. The enemy tried Lord Jesus with every chance he can get to tempt him. Lord Jesus wanted to leave the path at one point in time because he knew what was ahead of him. That's why Lord Jesus said this in Matthew 26, verse 41. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And to give you a more profound example is when Lord Jesus was praying so hard that it swept like drops of blood, right? And he asked the Heavenly Father to take this cup from me. See, he was going through the struggles of what the flesh can produce. But then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Let the Father's will be done. So Lord Jesus had his struggles too, although he was the son of God. So that's why Lord Jesus used to pray all the time in that secret place. And he used to fast and prepare himself. He used to prepare for battle because he knew that the flesh will always be a troublesome thing that wars against the spirit. So the enemy would do everything in his power to cause you to stray off the path. So even though you're still struggling with sin. That doesn't mean you're not chosen. In fact, most people that's chosen from God are usually the black sheep of the family. The one that people don't want, the ones that people look over, the ones that people act like you don't exist. Those are the ones that's usually chosen by God. 
Those are the ones that usually never, and I repeat, never choose to be a leader. And guess what? They have the most struggles in life when it comes down to some sort of addiction or, or some sort of sin. They have the most problems in life because of what they had to endure when it comes down to dealing with people like family members or just you might be in school and people don't want to be your friend. People don't want to deal with you. They look at you strange. And so the chosen of God usually grow up dealing with trauma, unresolved issues. So they turn to other stuff in order to feel that warm embrace. That usually be the reason why they become addicted to certain stuff because this stuff isn't going to judge them. This stuff isn't going to look past them. This stuff is going to give them that temporary feeling of pleasure. That warm embrace. That temporary feeling of happiness. I said all that to say this. Even though you struggle with something, that doesn't mean you're not chosen by God. There's people in the Bible that had problems. But the one thing they never did was give up on God. That's the difference. They never gave up on God. It was moments when they went a while without talking to God. But at the end of the day, they came back to God and they said, you know what, dear Heavenly Father, I repent from these ways. I ask for your forgiveness. And guess what happens? God embraced them like they never left. And then that's when God can truly use them to do something mighty that builds the kingdom of God. At the end of the day, right? You're chosen, but you still struggle with sin. The one thing I want to let you know is this. No matter how close you are to the Heavenly Father, the devil is never going to stop trying to tempt you, trying to get you off this path that the Heavenly Father has chosen for you. The enemy is never going to stop. The enemy tried Lord Jesus multiple times. He tried Lord Jesus. See, the reason why you feel like you're not chosen is because when God is preparing you to do something magnificent, to do something that brings his name glory, when God is preparing you, the devil will try to intensify that spiritual warfare the closer you get to becoming who God created you to be. And the enemy primary goal is to try to make you believe you're not chosen by God. That's why he tries to keep your past in front of you. Remember what I said about the chosen? They usually grow up in a traumatized childhood. You know, they go through a lot of stuff that keeps them at the bottom of the bottom. And the only one that can pull them out of that pit is the most high God. But that's what the enemy tries to keep in front of you, your, your trauma in order to make you believe God can't use you or God don't love you, but you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason. I was just watching, uh, this interview with this guy. He, he from LA and he was in the game and he went by the name jungle boy. He survived stuff that most would have been done. I'm talking about he survived gunshot wounds, kidnappings, and most people don't survive that type of stuff. The only reason we get to survive stuff that we usually aren't supposed to come back from is because God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. 
even my own brother survived stuff that most aren't supposed to come back from. My brother had an overdose. They were trying to pronounce him brain dead. But he heard the voice of my mother. She said, son, you got to fight. Immediately, he jumped up. Life came back into his body. That's why I'd be saying to y'all, I've seen this stuff with my own eyes. I seen this stuff with my own eyes, y'all. And what's crazy about that, right? My brother got friends that suffered the same fate, but they didn't come back from it. I even got friends that I used to work with when me and my family was living in South Carolina that suffered the same fate, the overdose, but they didn't come back from it. You're here for a reason, is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, you got your struggles. You struggle with addiction. You struggle with alcohol. You struggle with lust. You struggle with forgiveness. See, Joseph struggled with forgiveness at one point in time. And you would too if your family is the one who sold you to slavery. If your family is the one that turned their back on you, or if you're dealing with someone that constantly hurt you and say mean things to you, it's hard to forgive those people. But see, what Joseph ended up doing was casting his cares upon the Lord, for he cared for you. And he realized God did this to preserve their life. The reason why Joseph had to be separated from his family was because there was a famine about to take place. So God placed him in the land of his afflictions, but it was for one reason, and that's to preserve the life of God's chosen. See, if Joseph didn't go through that stuff that he went through, the dream that God gave him wouldn't have came to pass. And that's to be a leader over his family. See, God made room for his gift and that's to interpretate dreams. And when he interpreted that dream of the king at the time, and that was Pharaoh, Pharaoh put him in a position of power. And it, it was kind of funny because after Joseph reconnected with his family and stuff like that. His brothers thought that Joseph wouldn't forgive them. And so they started talking about it. And Joseph, he cried and he said, listen, even though y'all did this to me, it was for the good of God. God allowed this to happen to preserve our lives. See, there's things that you struggle with, but sometimes God don't allow us to have this loving family or this easy life, especially when you're chosen, especially when you got the favor of God. And the reason why God don't allow us to have this, this caring family and caring friends all the time is because God wants to preserve life. If you was connected to them, you probably would have been connected to the wrong people, and they would have influenced you in a negative way. Here's the thing. Whenever we're embraced by the world, it becomes hard for us to hear the voice of God or to reconnect with God because we're doing everything we want to. That's the weakness of the flesh. That's why Lord Jesus said that. He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. In Matthew 26, verse 41. That's why Lord Jesus said that. Watch and pray lest you fall into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. The spirit is always willing to commune with the heavenly father, to be obedient, to follow the instructions of God, to do what's hard. And that's to overcome the flesh. The spirit is always willing to do this. But the only way to increase in spiritual strength 
We got to leave our life in God's hands. See, God is the only one that has the power to plant the seeds and make them grow. You might be going through something right now that you're struggling with, but God can still use you. If only you believe, that's what it boils down to. That's what it boils down to. You're chosen, but you still struggle with sin. God don't make no mistakes. He already knew that. God already knew what you struggle with. It's so many people in the Bible that started off with a rocky childhood and people just disliking them for them even existing. Moses dealt with that. The generation of Joseph people passed away and stuff like that. And the Pharaoh at the time passed away. The new Pharaoh didn't know of Joseph. The new Pharaoh didn't know of Joseph. So he looked at the children of Israel and said, it's too many of them. Let's deal with them wisely. And he told the midwives to kill every firstborn son that was born. But if it be a daughter, let them be alive. So the midwives didn't do it because they feared God. But to make a long story short, Moses' mother hid him for three months when he was born. And when Pharaoh and the people came to kill all the, the sons that, they, that was born to them, that's when Moses' mom put him in this ark type thing and sent him down the river. So they had to hide Moses, but it was to preserve life because Moses grew up. He had anger issues. He took a man's life, but God still used him. God still used him in a mighty way. In Luke 7, verse 47 through 48, it say, Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she love much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same love little. And he said unto her, thy sins are are forgiven. So basically, there was this certain Pharisee that went by the name Simon. He was a Pharisee though. And he invited Lord Jesus over for dinner. And he basically didn't greet Lord Jesus in the proper way. He didn't do stuff for Lord Jesus because he didn't feel like other folk that was forgiven. But this lady heard that Lord Jesus was at this certain Pharisee house. So she came and she, the Bible say, she uh, anointed his feet, wiped his feet with her tears and stuff like that, right? And she kissed his feet and all this kind of stuff. She was, she was just appreciating Lord Jesus. She worshiped Lord Jesus and she just thanked him and she loved him. And that's why Lord Jesus said, Whoever is forgiven much, loves much. But whoever is forgiven little, loves little. So what I'm realizing about God's chosen is this. When we're in a state of chaos because of our childhood and just dealing with issues, problems, and the devil is intensifying that spiritual warfare because he never wants us to get on the right path. But let's say... We make that conscious decision to say, you know what? I'm tired of this life. I'm ready to let go of sin. I'm ready to change. I'm ready to come to the throne of grace and mercy and ask for forgiveness. And the moment you do that and confess your sins, God forgive you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. The moment you do that, you start recognizing there's people out here that went through the same struggles I went through. Abusive parents. Abusive spouse. People turning their back on you. People leaving you out there to die. There's people that went through the same stuff I went through. I'm not going to forget what God did for me. I'm going to love them the same way God loved me. What if I told you the reason why you went through so much, the reason why you're chosen, 
but you still struggle with sin was because God was developing your testimony. God allowed this to happen so you can truly help those that can't bear the pain. Be a light in a dark place. What if that's what being a light in a dark place really means? What if it means I've been there and done that? I know where this path will lead you to. I know how this will destroy your life. I'm going to extend the hand of grace and mercy that was extended to me. I'm going to love you the same way God loved me. I'm going to do this because God didn't leave me out there to perish. What if all that stuff you did was for this reason alone? And that's to help someone that might not be as strong as you. Because what I recognized in that chapter when, when Simon, the Pharisee, allowed Lord Jesus in his house and they were just having dinner and stuff, what, what I realized about this is he didn't do what the lady did because he was forgiven little. See, he didn't do as much as the lady did that came in there and worshiped Lord Jesus. But the lady, she showed more love because she did a lot in her life. And now she has an opportunity to be forgiven. And not only that, if she was willing to do that for Lord Jesus, to just love Lord Jesus, guess what? She's Lord Jesus' disciple. And Lord Jesus said, the world would know you are his disciples, how you show love to one another. See, God is going to use you in a mighty way. I just recently had a dream about a graduation. Now, when you're about to graduate high school and stuff like that, you try everything in your power to do good and make sure you're passing your grade. But then sometimes... It's almost like right when you get to the end of something, trouble follows. i never forget this, y'all. I'm in 12th grade. Never got in a fight in high school. Never. I never got in a fight in high school. And the one thing about me, I do not like school. I was always on the verge of just quitting. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. But I didn't like school. So I'm in 12th grade. I'm playing basketball one-on-one -on -one with this guy. And then next thing you know, the guy hit me because he couldn't, he couldn't really guard me. So he just all of a sudden hit me. Now, I could have walked away, but I didn't. I swung at him and kind of missed. So next thing you know, we get to fighting. I'm like, oh, man. I won the fight or whatever, right? But the teacher saw it. So I'm thinking, man, I'm about to get expelled out of school, man. And I know if I get expelled out of school, I'm not going to finish the 12th grade. It's over. So to make a long story short, my teacher, she had to send us to in-school suspension or whatever. We, we had to sit in um, detention. But, but before my teacher sent us off, she said, I saw what you did, but I got your back. So I was like, I ain't know what that meant at the time. So to make a long story even shorter, we sitting in detention and he ended up getting expelled for the rest of the year. But all I had to do was sit in detention for that day. And I was able to remain in school and finish out the year. And I graduated. Now, he started the, the trouble, but the Heavenly Father finished it. The point I'm trying to make is this. Although God seeing you do stuff, he understand why you had to do it. He understand that the enemy was just trying to cause you to not finish something. But I had that dream of graduation. And what the Heavenly Father was telling me is he's about to take someone to the next level. You're about to experience a graduation. God is about to allow you to pass through this, although it wasn't flawless. Although you had some trouble, although it was people attacking you and you had to defend yourself. God sees the battles that you had to fight, but he wants to let you know the reason why you survived because 
He sent his angels to protect you. He sent his angels to protect you. He allowed it. He caused it to work in your favor. So that's why you're about to graduate. Congratulations. You still standing. All that stuff they said about you. You pushed past it. All the times you wanted to give up, God didn't allow it. That's what it means for his strength to be made perfect in our time of weakness. God still got your back. God is never going to allow the enemy to stop you from becoming who he created you to be. Your story is already written. All you got to do is keep believing in God because the spirit is willing. Although the flesh is weak, the spirit is still willing. So that's why Lord Jesus taught us pray without ceasing so we can get to a point of overcoming that temptation. See, one thing I learned about the enemy is this. When you finally make up in your mind to get to the right path that the Heavenly Father has chosen for you, when you get to the end of something, every single time you're coming to the end of something, when you're ready to let go of your old life, there will be a moment that it just seemed like all odds are stacked against you. That spiritual warfare intensify, but it's a place that the Heavenly Father wants you to remain because if you remain in that temporary place of discomfort, when you finally get to the destination, you will be stronger. But what will happen is this, before you get to the destination, the devil will try to place a desirable temptation in front of you. It will be something that you want to do because of all the stuff you had to endure. And that's why the word also say, endure temptation, for he promised to give the crown of life to them that love him, that love Lord Jesus. But the devil will try to put these desirable temptations in front of you to cause you to stray off the path. But you came too far to give up now. See, when that situation happened to me when I was in 12th grade, my very first fight, out of all the years, in 12th grade, that's when a fight come my way. Out of all the years, think about this now. And the enemy knew I wanted to quit school. But see, the reason why God wanted me to complete school was because of the journey that he was preparing me for later on that I had no idea about because I'm in high school. I'm a teenager. I'm still learning how to live in life. You get what I'm saying? But if I didn't have school, when I became homeless, I wouldn't have been able to get a job as easy as I did. Because, you know, they always say you need your high school diploma and all that kind of stuff. But see, if God wasn't by my side, if God didn't send his angels to protect me, I would have gotten expelled out of school. You see what I'm saying? So God needed me to graduate. And he caused everything to work in my favor. See, a lot of the times, y'all, we don't know we're chosen because of the stuff we get into. We may get in a lot of trouble before we actually come to the Heavenly Father. But the moment that day arrives, God will forgive us for everything that we've done. And because of that forgiveness, that's how we're able to love more than the average person that may haven't done as much as you did. But that's what's going to cause you to do more for the kingdom of God than someone that give the bare minimum. See, people that's chosen by God love hard because of all the stuff they had to endure. So God will forgive you for the stuff you struggle with. And the more you fall in love with God, the more you're going to let go of the stuff you struggle with, the more you're going to overcome those sins. The enemy just wants you to believe that you're not chosen by God because of the stuff that you may have done in your past. But that's so far from the truth. You're chosen, even though you struggle with sin. But God already knew this, and that's why he's going to help you. It's time to graduate. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.